Current Progress Youth Song Line, Next World Dragon Clan, Ji Haoyue traveled through the world of the fox demon Little Red Lady and became the eldest young master of the Dongfang family. Faced with this world dominated by monsters and the crisis of the Dongfang family's collapse 20 years later, Dongfang Haoyue felt immense pressure. Fortunately, Dongfang Haoyue has awakened the standard gold finger of the Pathfinder, which allows her to shuttle through the world and open treasure chests to receive rewards, as well as add points, making Dongfang Haoyue immediately confident in her life in the new world. I, Dongfang Haoyue, must rely on my own efforts to achieve immortality and stand tall on the top of all the heavens and worlds. Dongfang Haoyue said. The main world is the world of fox demons. In the first world, under one person, the world to be written about is covered by the heavens, Do Pe, the dragon race, etc. Each world will be written in more detail keywords of the novel. Demon Fox Starting from one person to open treasure chests without pop-ups, Demon Fox Starting from one person to open treasure chests TXT Complete Collection Download, Demon Fox Starting from one person to open treasure chests. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Dongfang Young Master. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Dongfang Young Master Fox Demon World, one of the top aristocratic families of the One Qi Dao Alliance, the largest force in the human territory, is the Dongfang family Xinhua Mountain Villa. Today's Xinhua Villa looks particularly festive with lights and colorful decorations everywhere, and one can see the constant flow of people and shadows inside the villa. This situation is naturally due to a happy event at Xinhua Mountain Villa today. Today is the eighth birthday of Dongfang Haoyue and Dongfang Huaizhu, a pair of dragon and phoenix twins born to the head of the Dongfang family. Therefore, the head of the Dongfang family, Dongfang Guyue, set up a banquet at home and invited some close relatives to celebrate the birth of their two children. The Dongfang family of Xinhua Mountain Villa, as one of the two top aristocratic families on par with the Wangquan family, although their eight-year-old birthday is not a big day, the celebration is still grand, and guests come to congratulate them endlessly. As one of the main characters of this birthday celebration, Dongfang Haoyue, after pretending to be a good baby in front of everyone for a day, finally returned to her room after the celebration ended. Exhausted, he threw himself onto a soft bed covered in silk quilts. A cute maid who looked eleven or twelve years old and followed Dongfang Haoyue quickly stepped forward to help her young master take off his shoes and socks. Lying in bed, Dongfang Haoyue ordered in a calm tone that was completely different from his age, Xiao Qing, starting from tomorrow, young master, I will be practicing in seclusion to prepare for the Blue Sky Assembly in three months. Remember to tell my father and sister not to disturb me, okay? The maid named Xiao Qing answered softly, Okay young master, I will pass on the message to the master and the second young lady. Dong Fang Haoyue nodded satisfactorily and said, All right, you go out. I'm going to start practicing now. Watching Xiao Qing nod and leave the room, Dongfang Haoyue finally breathed a sigh of relief and thought to herself, hey, although she had a good pregnancy after crossing the river and became the young master of the Dongfang family in its heyday, the wealthy also suffer from the pain of the wealthy. Even a birthday can be exhausting. That's right, the young master of the Dongfang family, Dongfang Haoyue, was not originally from this world. He came through reincarnation through time travel. Dongfang Haoyue was originally named Ji Haoyue. In her past life, she was an ordinary young man from the Blue Star Country and had just graduated from university. Ji Haoyue's university was not a prestigious one, and during her time in college, she was suddenly released from the high-dot-pressure learning environment of high school. After entering the relaxed environment of college, she suddenly lost control and became a typical otaku, addicted to novels, anime, and games all day long. Therefore, she didn't learn much during her college years and graduated without a job. In addition, at that time, due to a once.in.a.century epidemic and a sluggish socio.economic situation, it was dangerous to temporarily find a job and wander around. Ji Haoyue, 
on the advice of her parents, temporarily went home and prepared to let things go for a while. After the epidemic passed, she went out to look for a job. After all, his family was also considered a well dot off family, with no worries about food and drink, and he was not in a hurry. I didn't expect that when Ji Hao Yue was watching anime at home, she became obsessed with an anime called Fox Demon Little Red Girl, which was quite long. Ji Hao Yue watched it all night. I didn't expect to just hiccup because of this overnight stay. Fortunately, Ji Hao Yue is usually considered to have accumulated virtue and good deeds, and is a person with extremely upright values. God gave Ji Hao Yue another chance allowing her to travel directly to the world of the fox demon Little Red Lady and become the eldest young master of the top aristocratic family of the Idao Alliance, Dong Fang Haoyue. And Ji Haoyue, oh no, it's Dong Fang Haoyue. He traveled through the time of reincarnation, which was also the peak of the Dong Fang family. The head of the family, Dong Fang Guyu, has just established the name of Dong Fang family Xinhua Mountain Villa, becoming the strongest family on par with the strongest family of the human race, Wang Quan's family. It can be said that he has a lot of reincarnation skills and has arrived at the right time. The anime that Dong Fang Hao Yue watched before his time traveling was the fox demon Little Red Lady. He knew that if he was born 20 or 30 years later, this Dong Fang family would start to feel lonely because of being stabbed by villains, and Dong Fang Guyue's bloodline would not have a good ending. In the original plot, Dong Fang Guyue received a disciple named Jin Renfong. This Jin Renfong was an ambitious beast that not only killed her mentor Dong Fang Guyue, but also forcibly took Dong Fang Guyue's divine blood. And he also wanted to have an idea for Dong Fang Guyue's two daughters. Although in the end, Jin Renfong achieved the expected fate, the Dong Fang family was still torn apart by his beast's calamity and the final outcome of both daughters was not very good. But now that Dong Fang Hao Yue has arrived, naturally this kind of thing will not happen. As for why Dong Fang Hao Yue is so confident, we have to mention Dong Fang Hao Yue's golden finger. As a traveler, the essential golden finger of Dong Fang Hao Yue is naturally present. After all, he has traveled through the world, and having a golden finger is not very reasonable. Dong Fang Hao Yue's golden finger is a system that awakened when Dong Fang Hao Yue was five years old. It is called the treasure box system, with a simple and straightforward name but powerful functions. Although the system does not have built that IN intelligence or similar features, after three years of research, Dong Fang Hao Yue naturally has a clear understanding of the various functions of this system. Since the system names are all called treasure chest systems, the biggest function of this system is naturally to open treasure chests. This treasure chest is not a physical treasure chest. According to Dong Fang Hao Yue's understanding, the so dot called treasure chest in the system will appear on specific characters. As long as you stay within a hundred meter range with the person carrying the treasure chest, the target character's treasure chest will be opened, and Dong Fang Hao Yue will receive rewards from the treasure chest. A person carrying a treasure chest will have a symbol of the chest above their head, which is completely invisible and imperceptible to anyone except for Dong Fang Hao Yue. As for the specific character carrying the treasure chest, although the system did not specify it, according to Dong Fang Hao Yue's speculation, it should refer to the plot character, who has more scenes in the original plot. As for why Dong Fang Hao Yue has such speculation, it is naturally because he has already tried the treasure box opening function of the system. When Dong Fang Hao Yue first awakened this system on his fifth birthday, he discovered that there were two people in this Xinhua villa who possessed treasure chests. These two people, one is Dong Fang Huaizhu, the twin sister of Dong Fang Hao Yue, and the other is the culprit who caused the destruction of the Dong Fang family in the original plot the young Jin Renfong. In fact, if it were just them, Dong Fang Hao Yue could not be completely certain of her guess until a few months later, when Dong Fang Hao Yue's second sister, Dong Fang Qinlan, was born, Dong Fang Hao Yue also found a treasure chest on Dong Fang Qinlan. Apart from them, Dong Fang Hao Yue has also seen other people in the Xinhua Villa, and there are no other treasure chests. 
That's why Dong Fang Hao Yue guessed that the appearance pattern of this treasure chest should be on the characters in the plot. Because if we talk about the differences between Dong Fang Hao Yue and Jin Ren Feng, the only difference is that they are both important characters in the original plot, with more scenes than the rest of the Dong Fang family combined. After discovering the treasure chest on their bodies, as their biological brother and the eldest young master of the Dong Fang family, Dong Fang Hao Yue naturally followed the system prompts and stayed by their side for an hour, successfully opening the treasure chest on their bodies and obtaining the reward in the treasure chest. From Jin Renfeng's body, Dong Fang Hao Yue developed a skill called Fire Control Technique, which allows Dong Fang Hao Yue to better control flames. From the treasure chests of her two sisters, Dong Fang Hao Yue developed two identical skills. The innate ability of the Dong Fang family, the demon slaying divine fire, and pure yang inflammation. However, as a member of the Dong Fang family's bloodline, Dong Fang Hao Yue has a natural talent for pure yang inflammation, and he had already awakened at the age of three. Therefore, after developing this skill, the system automatically decomposed the two skills it encountered into 40 skill points, which also allowed Dong Fang Hao Yue to discover the second feature of the system. The Attribute Panel At this moment, Dong Fang Hao Yue lying in bed is summoning the system's own attribute panel to view. Host Dong Fang Hao Yue Precision 9, plus, Qi 19, plus, God 16, plus, Skill. Pure Yang Inflammation, Red, LV2, plus, Demon Slaying Divine Fire, has a restraining effect on monsters, and the flame itself has special effects such as purification, high temperature, and refinement. Fire Control, Blue, LV3, a spell that easily controls various flames. Skill Points 40 Attribute Point 0 The attribute panel provided by the system looks quite simple. In terms of attributes, there are only three items. Essence, Qi, and Spirit. Although there are only three items, it already includes the three treasures of human beings. Essence refers to everything related to the body, including physical strength, physical defense, physique, lifespan, and so on. According to the system's instructions, the value of this item for a normal adult male is 10 points. At the age of 8, Dong Fang Hao Yue was able to possess physical fitness close to that of an adult male, entirely due to the warmth and nourishment of her body's magical power. Qi refers to the energy that a person possesses, including magic, demon power, internal power, and so on. According to the system's instructions, an ordinary person with the worst qualifications can achieve approximately 10 points of Qi attribute by practicing 24 hours a day for a year without interruption. Dong Fang Hao Yue, having awakened to pure young inflammation and possessing excellent physical talent, can be said to be a little genius. After three years of cultivation, she finally developed her current attributes. As for God, it is a manifestation of a person's spiritual strength and soul strength. Dong Fang Hao Yue has been a person for two generations, and this aspect is much higher than that of a normal eight-year-old child. These three attributes are complementary and interrelated. Essence is the foundation of the latter two. If the essence is not high enough, both Qi and Shen cannot be too high, otherwise they will be unable to withstand and directly explode and die. And God is the foundation for regulating Qi. If God is not high enough, no matter how much Qi there is, it is useless and cannot be controlled at all. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Entering One Person You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Entering One Person At the same time, the presence of Qi will gradually warm up and improve the essence and spirit. As for the extent and speed of improvement, it depends on the method of using Qi, which is the cultivation method of Qi. The emphasis of improving different cultivation methods is also different. After the three attributes, there is a plus sign. According to Dong Fang Hao Yue's speculation, these three attributes should all be able to be added with dots. However, Dong Fang Hao Yue's current attribute point is zero, so the plus sign is gray and cannot be operated. It seems that I will rely entirely on my own efforts in the future, 
Dong Fang Haoyue sighed as she looked at the plus sign behind the attribute. Meanwhile, according to the system instructions, the increase in the value of this attribute point is progressive, and for every 10 points increase in the value of the attribute point, the related attributes will double. For example, when the precision attribute is increased from 20 points to 30 points, it may seem like it has only increased by 10 points, but the actual body strength has doubled overall. From 30 to 40 points, it will double again, and so on. That is to say, for every 10 additional attribute points, the related attributes increase by 100%, and each attribute point actually increases by 10%. The higher the value of the attribute point, the greater the increase that each attribute point brings to Dong Fang Haoyue. In addition to physical attributes, the attribute panel will also display the skills possessed by Dong Fang Haoyue, which can also be added with points. Skill bonus requires skill points to be consumed. Currently, Dong Fang Haoyue only knows that when opening the treasure chest, the existing skill system will automatically decompose it into skill points, or actively decompose existing skills to obtain skill points. Dong Fang Haoyue currently only has one pure Yang inflammation skill and fire control skill, so it is naturally impossible for him to actively decompose them. Therefore, he only has 40 skill points obtained from opening treasure chests on his body. Because there is currently no stable channel for obtaining skill points, Dong Fang Haoyue has kept her 40 skill points untouched and is preparing to save them for now. She will use them again when she finds a stable channel for obtaining skill points, or in emergency situations. Fortunately, skills can also be upgraded through self-cultivation. When Dong Fang Haoyue first awakened from pure Yang inflammation, she was only at level 1. It was through Dong Fang Haoyue's persistent cultivation over the past three years that she rose to the current level 2. In addition to the treasure chest opening function and attribute panel, this system also has an extremely powerful feature called Shuttle Through the Heavens. As the name suggests, this function allows Dong Fang Haoyue to travel to other worlds again, explore, and gain an increase in strength. It just takes three years to recharge each time this function is used. Since Dong Fang Haoyue obtained this system, he has been looking forward to this function for a long time. However, because of this recharge, he can only helplessly watch and feel helpless. And today, it has been exactly three years since Dong Fang Haoyue obtained the system at the age of five. The function of shuttling through the heavens has cooled down, and Dong Fang Haoyue is eager to experiment with this function. Just now he instructed the maid to shut down, just to lay the groundwork for the time travel, as he did not know the specific situation of the time travel. Although many travel novels I have read in my past life on Blue Star depict different worlds with relatively static time, Dong Fang Haoyue dare not gamble that if time is not relatively static, it would be difficult to explain why an eight-year-old child has been missing for a long time. Fortunately, the system has a basic introduction to the shuttle function. Although the world traversed is random, it is Dong Fang Haoyue who decides when to return to the world. He can return whenever he wants. Therefore, Dong Fang Haoyue told the maid in advance that she wanted to seclude herself, and then used the time travel function to check first. She decided when to return based on the situation. Even if the time between the two worlds was not relatively static, she didn't have to worry about being unable to explain. At this moment, everything was ready, and Dong Fang Haoyue glanced at her attribute panel again, then eagerly issued a command to the system in her heart. System, activate the shuttle function to the heavens. Ding, the shuttle function to the heavens has been activated, and the system is searching for the world of the heavens. Ding, we have searched for the unknown celestial world, are establishing a temporal and spatial channel, inserting causal connections, and generating relevant identities. Ding, the connection to the heavenly world has been successful. Dear host, you are about to enter the heavenly world. Under one person, the system will start transmitting after three seconds of countdown. Please be prepared. 3.2.1, transfer begins. With a series of sound prompts from the system, when the final countdown ended, Dong Fang Haoyue only felt a dazzling white light shining in front of her, 
forcing her to close her eyes. When Dong Fang Haoyue opened her eyes again, she found that she was no longer on her own big bed in the fox demon world Dong Fang family. At this moment, she was standing in a familiar and unfamiliar place. The reason why this place is familiar is because Dong Fang Haoyue knows it. It is a long dot distance station surrounded by cars and buses, and there are also a few passers-by carrying big and small bags as gifts. Judging from the surroundings, this should be a long dot distance station in a modern town. As for why this place is said to be unfamiliar, it is because the time of the fox demon world where Dong Fang Haoyue passed through is still ancient. He has not seen such a modern scene in eight years, so he still feels a bit uncomfortable now. Is this the world under one person? Dong Fang Haoyue looked around at her surroundings, feeling a little curious. As a famous Chinese manga in the past life of Dong Fang Haoyue, he naturally read the original work. Moreover, due to being a person of two generations, Dong Fang Haoyue has a high divine attribute, and one of the benefits it brings is that his memory has been greatly enhanced. Therefore, Although Dong Fang Haoyue has been traveling for eight years, he still remembers all the anime and novels he has read in his past life, and has a lot of knowledge about this world. Dong Fang Haoyue remembers the basic situation of the world and the plot of the original work. However, in her past life, the anime under one person only appeared in the Bio Village section, and Dong Fang Haoyue had not read the manga, so she was not familiar with the plot after Bio Village in the manga. Since I have come to this world, being familiar with the plot is one of my major strengths. I need to plan my plans carefully for the future in this world. Dong Fang Haoyue found a waiting chair in the corner of the station, sat down, and began to seriously consider her next actions in this world. After entering the world, Dong Fang Haoyue received a prompt from the system that the time flow of this world is not static compared to the fox demon world, about 30 to 1, which means that one month has passed in this world, and one day has passed in the fox demon world. Before coming, Dong Fang Haoyue had already announced in advance that she would be in seclusion, so not appearing for three to five days would not arouse suspicion from her family. That is to say, in this world, Dong Fang Haoyue's stay for three to five months is not a problem. My biggest goal here is to improve my strength. I have a treasure chest system, and the best and easiest way to improve my strength is to make good use of the system's functions. That is to say, I need to contact as many plot characters as possible, open their treasure chests, and receive rewards. With this in mind, Dong Fang Haoyue began to carefully recall the plot under one person and began to calculate how to better interact with more plot characters. The plot under one person is both complex and simple. About 70 years ago in this world, there were a group of disciples from the prestigious righteous sects within the circle of outsiders who joined a villainous organization in this world. Chuanxing. There were a total of 30.6 of these people, known as the 36 Thieves. Several of the 30.6 Thieves discovered a secret in this world together and created eight extremely magical skills, known as the Eight Wonderful Skills. The effects of each of these eight extraordinary skills can be described as incredible, even surpassing the understanding of qi cultivation by ordinary people in this world. Each skill is the pinnacle of a cultivation system, and it can be said that it is at a completely different level from the qi cultivation methods of ordinary people. Such powerful skills naturally attracted the covet of other aliens. Therefore, in the alien world at that time, Major aristocratic families and sects began to unite to pursue the owners of these eight extraordinary skills, ostensibly to eradicate the antagonistic organization, but in reality, it was to seize the eight extraordinary skills. Although the owners of these eight wonders have gained considerable power due to these eight wonders, they are not invincible. Faced with the pursuit of the entire alien world, some of these people eventually died or fled, and from then on, they went into hiding and disappeared without a trace. The eight wonderful skills disappeared from the eyes of the world. Seventy years later, today, the story under one person officially begins. The protagonist of the story is a young man named Zhang Chulan, and a girl named Feng Baobao who is not old or dead. 
Zhang Chulun's grandfather was the strongest of the eight extraordinary skills at that time, the creator of the source and flow of qi, and it was precisely because of his identity as a descendant of the source and flow of qi that Zhang Chulun was drawn into the world of aliens, leading to many people and events. The simplest way to interact with plot characters is to follow the protagonist. After all, as long as they are plot characters, they will definitely intersect with the protagonist. So, all I need to do is find a way to deal with the protagonist, the nervous Chu Lan. After recalling the plot under one person, Dong Fang Haoyue had a rough idea, which was to find the protagonist Zhang Chu Lan in this world's plot, follow him, and naturally get in touch with most of the plot characters. In the original plot, as of the end of the Bio Village chapter, the characters in the plot are mostly concentrated in three places. The semi-official organization, Naida Tong Company, Longhu Mountain Tianchur Mansion, and Bio Village. And Zhang Chulan will go to all three places, and the time they go happens to be when the plot characters are most concentrated. Therefore, as long as you follow Zhang Chulan, you can appear in these places at the most suitable time and for the most suitable reason. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Zhang Chulun's Younger Brother. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 Zhang Chulun's Younger Brother Due to System Limitations, if you want to open the treasure chest on the characters in the plot, Dong Fang Haoyue needs to stay within a range of 100 meters from the characters for an hour, which is not a simple task. After all, anyone who suddenly follows you for an hour with an unfamiliar person will be wary. Although the system only requires staying with the plot characters for an hour and does not specify what to do, even if you tie them up and stay with them for an hour, it is still possible to open the treasure chest. But Dong Fang Haoyue can't do this to all the plot characters, can she? Moreover, some plot characters have strong abilities, such as the old celestial master in the heavenly master mansion. If he is happy, he will be alone. If he is not happy, anyone who comes will be alone. Dong Fang Haoyue cannot be strong enough against such a person. Therefore, Dong Fang Haoyue needs to come up with a reasonable reason to achieve this condition, in order to open the treasure chest of the plot characters, and Zhang Chulan is a very reasonable reason. As long as she can gain the trust of Zhang Chulan, through her presence, Dong Fang Haoyue has an excuse to spend enough time with those plot characters. By the way, when I entered the world, the system prompted me that I had been assigned an identity in this world. I haven't seen what identity it is yet. When he first entered the world, the system prompted Dong Fang Haoyue to assign him an identity in this world, allowing him to check it on his own. But at that time, Dong Fang Haoyue focused on observing the surrounding environment and didn't have time to look. If the identity assigned to me by the system is directly related to Zhang Chulan, that would be great, so I don't have to rack my brains thinking about reasons. Dong Fang Haoyue thought to herself and clicked on the system notification. Ding, the host has entered the world under one person, and the system is matching the host's causal identity based on the host's situation. Ding, matching successful. The host's current world identity is. Name. Zhang Haoyue Identity Zhang Chulun's Half-Brother Background Zhang Chulun's father, Zhang Yuda, had a child with him while he was away. His mother passed away after giving birth to you. Zhang Yuda left a month ago and instructed you to come and find Zhang Chulun. Current Time April 1, 2016, at 1.30 p.m. Current Location Jingzhong Town, Lingzi, Shandong, I will go, system, awesome. After reading the identity provided by the system, Dong Fang Haoyue couldn't help but angrily praise the system in her heart. The identity provided by the system perfectly meets the needs of Dong Fang Haoyue. Zhang Chulun's half brother is a perfect entry point. Dong Fang Haoyue, who was in a good mood, looked at the system prompt below her identity information again. The prompt was very long, but in summary, there were only two points. Firstly, the identity arranged by the system will take into account the needs of the host, which is Dong Fang Haoyue, and try to choose an identity with simple interpersonal relationships but close relationships with the world protagonist. 
Secondly, the system will not extensively modify the memories of characters in the world. In terms of information recording and other aspects, the identity arranged by the system is impeccable. However, the only person in this world who truly possesses memories related to Dong Fang Haoyue is his immediate relatives. At present, in a one-person world, only Zhang Yuda has been systematically implanted with relevant memories about Zhang Haoyue, and others will not remember Zhang Haoyue. System, you're really my system mom, isn't that too thoughtful? Love, love. After reading the system prompt, Dong Fang Haoyue couldn't help but praise the system's thoughtfulness in her heart again. She even took the initiative to consider the host's needs. Is it really difficult to find such a system even with a lantern on it? As for the second point, apart from his immediate family members, there are no memories of him from anyone else, but he doesn't care at all. After all, Dong Fang Haoyue is not a person from this world. He came to this world just to enhance his own strength. So he only needs his identity to have a reasonable reason to achieve his goals, as for whether anyone remembers him, that's not important. As long as his identity is not exposed, even if there is no one in this world who knows him, it doesn't matter. With the identity arranged by the system, all I need to do now is find Zhang Chulan and I can naturally follow him. But where am I going to find him now? Although she had gained her identity, Dong Fang Haoyue began to make trouble again. This is a world, and Dong Fang Haoyue's current body is still eight years old. Although it is not a problem for him to fight four or five ordinary adults alone based on his strength, many things are not just about his strength. Not to mention anything else, at his current age, it is impossible for him to buy a ticket alone. Therefore, if his location is far from Zhang Chulan, it will be difficult to find him alone. The identity information provided by the system just now includes the current time and my location. Let me see, I have it. Dong Fang Haoyue flipped through the identity information provided by the system, and then carefully recalled the anime under a person she had watched in her previous life. Although time has passed for a long time, fortunately, Dong Fang Haoyue's strong memory still reminds her of some of the original plot in the animation. I remember at the beginning of the anime, Zhang Chulan was preparing to go home and sweep his grandfather's grave for the Qingming festival holiday. Then, she happened to encounter his grandfather's body being stolen, and she met Feng Bao Bao for the first time. Thinking of this, Dong Fang Haoyue glanced at the current date and time displayed on the system, combined with some personal information he had seen in his previous life, and felt a stir in his heart. According to the system display, today is April 1st, Friday, and three days later is Qingming Festival. The small town I am currently in should be Zhang Chulun's hometown. In the original plot, Zhang Chulun's return time happened to be after school on Friday, so he should be back here this afternoon Dong Fang Haoyue has determined Zhang Chulun's position and the next actions, making things much easier to handle. With my current persona, I shouldn't have known Zhang Chulan. I still need to find a way to reasonably recognize Zhang Chulan. After a moment of contemplation, Dong Fang Haoyue suddenly patted her head and whispered. I'm really foolish. This world is modern society, and my current identity is still an eight-year-old child. If I have difficulties, why don't I just go find the police officer? Having determined the next action plan in his heart and thought of the words to say after meeting Zhang Chulan, Dong Fang Haoyue did not stay at the station any longer. He stood up and walked out of the station gate. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Dong Fang Haoyue's Plan you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4 Dong Fang Haoyue's plan In front of the small town police station in Jingzhong town, Dong Fang Haoyue politely bid farewell to a middle-aged man. Thank you, uncle, for bringing me here. If you have anything to do, you can go ahead and do it first. I'll trouble the police for the rest. The middle-aged uncle looked at Dong Fang Haoyue, who was polite and obedient, and couldn't help but smile on his face. He waved his hand and said. It's okay, uncle. I don't have much to do. Help people to the end and send the Buddha to the west. 
since I choose to help you, I naturally need to see you find your brother so that I can rest assured. Dong Fang Haoyue looked at the enthusiastic uncle and couldn't refuse. She could only sigh helplessly and say, Okay, then please trouble uncle. Speaking of this uncle, Dong Fang Haoyue must admit that he was indeed hasty. At the station, Dong Fang Haoyue had planned her next action plan and was ready to go directly to the police. She told them about her brother's whereabouts and met Zhang Chulan through the police. In this way, as long as Dong Fang Haoyue weaves a reasonable story, she can recognize Zhang Chulan without suspicion. After all, the identity information of Dong Fang Haoyue can be found by the police, so it becomes a disguised testimony from the police, which can dispel Zhang Chulan's suspicion. In the original plot, Zhang Chulan is a character who is very intelligent and close to demons, and among the younger generation, her intelligence can also be considered one of the best. Although he has always acted like a shameless slut, this is actually just a facade. Not to mention anything else, just in the Luo Tian de Jiao chapter, Zhang Chulan could infer some of the truth about the degree of Heavenly Master based solely on the words of the old Heavenly Master, as well as in the Baiyu Village chapter, Zhang Chulan's cunning and cunning show that Zhang Chulan is actually an extremely intelligent person. Smart people often have a common problem, which is being suspicious. In the original plot, whether it was Feng Baobao, Feng Zhenghao, or Ma Xianhong, none of these people who actively approached Zhang Chulan could gain her trust from the beginning. So Dong Fang Haoyue knew that if he suddenly eagerly ran to find Zhang Chulan and told him that he was his younger brother, Zhang Chulan might believe it on the surface, but he would definitely have great doubts about Dong Fang Haoyue in his heart, even if he was just an eight-year-old child. So, Dong Fang Haoyue needs to find a way to detour and recognize Zhang Chulan again. At the same time, she also needs someone with more credibility to indirectly prove Dong Fang Haoyue, so that he can try to dispel Zhang Chulan's suspicion as much as possible. And the police in the small town are the candidates selected by Dong Fang Haoyue as proof. Firstly, in modern society, the identity of a police officer naturally has credibility, and Dong Fang Haoyue's identity can withstand police investigation, so it can be guaranteed that the police can testify for him. Secondly, Dong Fang Haoyue knew that there was a police officer named Song at this police station who had a good relationship with Zhang Chulan. According to the original plot, it is feared that after Zhang Chulun's father left, this police officer may have helped Zhang Chulun a lot. And with the sudden appearance of Dong Fang Haoyue's younger brother, Zhang Chulun will definitely find the familiar officer Song to investigate Dong Fang Haoyue. After Zhang Chulun learned the identity information of Dong Fang Haoyue from Officer Song, she could basically dispel Zhang Chulun's doubts. After all, people always disdain the truth of being delivered to their doorstep but firmly believe in the rumors they try their best to find out. This is human nature. As for whether Dong Fang Haoyue would reveal any flaws that led Zhang Chulan to suspect him again when we got along in the future, Dong Fang Haoyue didn't care. After all, by that time, Dong Fang Haoyue had already received the reward she wanted, and perhaps she was already ready to leave this world. The plan was beautiful, but the first step of the plan was to block Dong Fang Haoyue. To ask the police for help, Dong Fang Haoyue first needs to know where the police station is. But Dong Fang Haoyue has just crossed over and doesn't even have a mobile phone on her body, and she doesn't even have the coins of this world, so she can't find the location of the police station on her own. Fortunately, Dong Fang Haoyue also has an age advantage. At the age of eight, as long as he randomly finds someone who doesn't look bad on the street and asks him to take him to the police station, he is likely to succeed. So, after coming out of the station, Dong Fang Haoyue approached this seemingly friendly uncle and asked him to help take her to the police station. Unexpectedly, Dong Fang Haoyue did not misread people. This uncle is indeed a kind and enthusiastic person, but he is a bit too enthusiastic. Originally, Dong Fang Haoyue was just planning to inquire with uncle about the location of the police station, and then walked over on her own. After all, his physique is close to the limit of an ordinary person, and this small town is not big either. 
walking to the police station is not a problem for him. Unexpectedly, this uncle heard that Dong Fang Hao Yue was going to the police station and after asking the reason, he insisted on personally sending Dong Fang Hao Yue. And he must also accompany Dong Fang Hao Yue to find his brother, which really makes Dong Fang Hao Yue feel a bit helpless. However, this uncle was also well intentioned. With Dong Fang Hao Yue's personality, he couldn't refuse forcefully, so he had to let this uncle alone. Accompanied by this uncle, Dong Fang Hao Yue walked into the small town police station and found the police officer on duty. Police uncle, hello, my name is Zhang Hao Yue. I would like you to help me find my brother, his name is Zhang Chulan. For today's Dong Fang Hao Yue, pretending to be an eight year old child is already a familiar thing. He expressed his intention to the on duty police officer with a cute voice unique to children. The on duty police officer saw that the speaker was an eight year old child, and his originally serious face also showed a friendly smile. He said to Dong Fang Hao Yue, Child, why did you come to the police station to find your brother? Dong Fang Hao Yue explained. Police uncle, it's like this. I used to live with my dad, but he said he left a while ago and asked me to come here to find my brother. However, I don't know where my brother is, so I would like you to help me find him. The police officer on duty was surprised to see Dong Fang Hao Yue, an eight-year-old child, speak so clearly and logically. He then turned his gaze to the uncle who came with Dong Fang Hao Yue. Uncle quickly spoke up and testified to Dong Fang Hao Yue, saying, It's like this, I met this child at the station. It seems he came to us by car. When he saw me, he asked me where the police station was. He said he wanted to find his brother, so I brought him over. After saying that, uncle roast to the police. I don't know what this child's father is thinking, how could he let such a young child travel on his own? He really has no sense of responsibility. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Animals are not as good as Zhang Yuda. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 5 Animals are not as good as Zhang Yuda. The on duty police officer saw the situation and began to inquire about Dong Fang Hao Yue's information about Zhang Chulan. Little brother, how much do you know about your brother? If there's only one name, the police uncle won't be able to investigate. Dong Fang Hao Yue was already prepared for this issue and slowly said to the on duty police My name is Zhang Hao Yue, my brother's name is Zhang Chulan. My father's name is Zhang Yuda, and my grandfather's name is Zhang Xilin. They moved here to a place called Baitukyu North Village 14 years ago. My grandfather passed away 12 years ago, and one year later, my father left my brother and went to another place. My brother should be 19 years old this year. That's all my father told me. Although I had seen Dong Fang Hao Yue like a young adult before, the on-duty police officer was still somewhat surprised to see Dong Fang Hao Yue speak out a long string of information so fluently. After staring blankly at Dong Fang Hao Yue for a while, the on-duty police officer finally regained consciousness and hurriedly said. Okay, okay, that should be enough information. I'll help you check. With that, the police on duty opened the registered resident system on the computer and checked it on the computer according to the information provided by Dong Fang Hao Yue. In fact, the original process should not be like this. How could ordinary people easily ask the police to help find people? I'm afraid the police need to investigate you thoroughly before they can help you find someone. But who made Dong Fang Hao Yue still look like an eight-year-old child now? What bad thoughts can a child have? So the police officer on duty didn't have any doubts about Dong Fang Hao Yue. After listening to the information he told, he directly helped him investigate. It has to be said that this is the advantage of age. Children are always more likely to gain the trust of others. In no time, the on duty police officer searched for relevant information about Zhang Chulan. He carefully looked at the information on the computer and when he saw Zhang Chulan's photo, he seemed to remember something. Why is Zhang Chulan so familiar? By the way, it seems that old Song in the office is quite familiar with him. 
I have seen him come to the office several times to find old Song. After seeing the photo of Zhang Chulan, the police officer on duty finally remembered who Zhang Chulan was. The police officer on duty is also an old police officer who worked here more than a decade ago. When he heard Dong Fang Hao Yue describe Zhang Chulan's information earlier, he felt familiar, but couldn't remember the specific details for a moment. After seeing the photo of Zhang Chulan, the on duty police finally remembered who Zhang Chulan was. Isn't this the orphan from the Zhang family? When Zhang Chulin's grandfather Zhang Xilin was killed, it caused quite a stir at the police station. After all, it was already 2004 and the whole society had entered a harmonious society. However, Zhang Chulin's grandfather was unfortunately killed by someone. In this small town, it is already a big deal, let alone the fact that the police station has some connection to this matter. This old police officer naturally heard of this incident back then. Later, Zhang Xilin's son Zhang Yuda also went missing, leaving an eight-year-old child directly sent to an orphanage. At that time, the police officer in charge of the Zhang Xilin case, Officer Song, learned about Zhang Chulin's situation due to his concern about the case, and since then, he has taken good care of Zhang Chulan. And sometimes Zhang Chulan also comes to the office to find Officer Song, so this on-duty police officer also knows Zhang Chulan. Alas, this Zhang Yuda, who is blind to such a name, is really wicked. Every time his child is eight years old, he disappears. It's really his mother. After recalling Zhang Chulin's information, the on-duty police couldn't help but curse at Zhang Yuda in their hearts, wishing to find Zhang Yuda himself and beat him with big ear melon seeds. The on-duty police officer, who had no doubt about Dong Fang Hao Yue, was now filled with sympathy for her. He said to Dong Fang Hao Yue with a pleasant expression. Zhang Hao Yue, right. Hao Yue, where is your brother's information? I have checked it and there happens to be a police officer in the office who is quite familiar with your brother. I will take you to find this police officer and ask him to notify your brother, okay? Upon hearing the words of the on-duty police officer, Dong Fang Hao Yue was overjoyed and knew that half of her plan had been successful. She immediately nodded and said. Okay, thank you, Uncle Police. The on-duty police officer looked at the obedient Dong Fang Hao Yue and couldn't help but sigh in his heart, what a well-behaved, obedient, and intelligent child. At the same time, he cursed Zhang Yuda even more harshly. Even such a good child was willing to leave. At this moment, Zhang Yuda was already a beast in the police officer's heart. Of course, Dong Fang Hao Yue didn't know that she had caused Zhang Yuda to bear such a bad reputation, otherwise she would probably apologize to Zhang Yuda in her heart. The police station in this small town is not a high-dot-rise building. The entire station only has two floors, but the area is quite large. Under the guidance of the on-duty police officer, Dong Fang Hao Yue followed him to an office on the second floor of the police station. As for the enthusiastic uncle who accompanied him, he had already been persuaded to leave by the on-duty police officer. The on-duty police knocked on the open office door and immediately entered the office with Dong Fang Hao Yue. The office furnishings are very simple. There is a long desk with a monitor and some simple decorations. Behind the desk, there is a row full of filing cabinets. Sitting at the desk was a middle-aged police officer, looking in his forties or fifties, with a Chinese-style face and dressed in police uniform, looking full of righteousness. Officer Song, this is Zhang Haoyue. The situation is like this. The on-duty police officer brought Dong Fang Haoyue to his desk, introduced him, and then introduced the situation of Dong Fang Haoyue to Officer Song. That's it. Aren't you quite familiar with Zhang Chulan, so I brought him over directly and handed him over to you. You come and contact Zhang Chulan. After listening to the description from the on-duty police officer, Officer Song did not immediately agree. Instead, he looked at Dong Fang Hao Yue with a puzzled gaze and murmured. Chu Lan's younger brother. The on-duty police officer had no suspicion of Dong Fang Hao Yue, but Officer Song felt something was wrong. 
Because just this morning, Officer Song had just met a woman who spoke similarly to Dong Fang Haoyue. She claimed to be Zhang Chulin's half-sister. Moreover, the words spoken by Zhang Chulin's sister are similar to those of Dong Fang Haoyue, except that Dong Fang Haoyue was called by Zhang Yuda, while that sister was called by her mother. Within a day, two people claiming to be relatives of Zhang Chulan suddenly came over, and no wonder Officer Song found it strange. However, Dong Fang Haoyue's eight-year-old appearance still played a role. Officer Song did not directly suspect that Dong Fang Haoyue's purpose was impure, but instead asked. Do you know a girl named Zhang Baobao? End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Zhang Chulan. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Zhang Chulan Upon hearing Officer Song's question, Dong Fang Haoyue knew that he must have met Feng Baobao. Dong Fang Haoyue certainly knew Feng Baobao, but Zhang Haoyue should not have known Feng Baobao, so Dong Fang Haoyue directly denied. Zhang Baobao. I haven't heard of this name before. Officer Song said somewhat strangely. According to Zhang Baobao, she is also Zhang Yuda's daughter, and when it comes to her, she is also your sister. Didn't your father tell you about her? Dong Fang Haoyue shook her head and said. No, Dad never mentioned anything about Zhang Baobao. He only told me about his brother Zhang Chulan. Seeing that nothing could be asked from Dong Fang Haoyue, Officer Song stopped asking and instead kindly said. Since you don't know, then forget it. I called Chulan this morning and he said he will be here this afternoon. Can you wait here for now? Dong Fang Haoyue said in an obedient tone. Okay, Uncle. Due to the lack of space in Officer Song's office, Dong Fang Haoyue was taken to a lounge in the police station by Officer Song. This lounge is not big, it has a set of sofas, a coffee table, an office desk, and a computer. After Officer Song sent Dong Fang Haoyue to the lounge, perhaps there was something else to do and he was ready to leave first. However, he was afraid that Dong Fang Haoyue would be bored so he deliberately opened the computer in the lounge and played a small game for Dong Fang Haoyue before leaving the lounge. Watching Officer Song leave the lounge, Dong Fang Haoyue breathed a slight sigh of relief. To be honest, he was really afraid that Officer Song would stay with him. If Officer Song stays, he will definitely chat with him, but there are many mistakes. After all, Dong Fang Haoyue is not from this world. Talking too much will inevitably lead to flaws. Fortunately, Officer Song is at least a police officer and doesn't have time to stay here with a child. Afterwards, Dong Fang Haoyue stayed alone in this lounge playing with the computer. The computer in the lounge may be a bit old, but at least it still has internet connectivity. Through this computer, Dong Fang Haoyue carefully learned a lot of intelligence about the world. Simply put, on the surface, this world is almost identical to the world of Dong Fang Haoyue's previous life, with no special features, and the development of history looks the same. Dong Fang Haoyue has attempted to search online for information about aliens, but has not received any relevant search results. Sure enough, in this world, strangers and ordinary people are simply two worlds. However, once it exists, there will be traces. There are still some video messages online that are related to strangers, but they are all regarded as strange legends by ordinary people. Only in the eyes of people like Dong Fang Haoyue who know the inside story can they discover some hidden truths in the messages. Time quickly passed while Dong Fang Haoyue was browsing online for information, and soon it was around 5 p.m. in the evening. At this point, the sun had already begun to set, leaving only a golden red sunset hanging in the sky, casting a golden halo. At this moment, a surprised shout suddenly came from Officer Song's office. What? My grandfather's grave has been dug up by someone. Has my dad received any news? What's the situation? The person shouting was a young boy aged 18 or 19, dressed in casual clothes, with his long hair tied behind his head in a high ponytail. This person is none other than Dong Fang Haoyue, 
who is one of the main characters in the plot of the world under one person. Zhang Chulan Zhang Chulan usually studies at a university in the south of Tianjin. She came back today because the school is closed for a few days after Qingming Festival, so she is planning to come back to sweep the grave for her grandfather. Unexpectedly, as soon as she arrived in town, Zhang Chulan learned from Officer Song, an uncle who had shown kindness to her, that her grandfather's grave had been dug up and her body was missing. Not only that, Officer Song also told Zhang Chulan a news that startled his chin. It turned out that he was not the only child of Zhang Yuda. His father has other children outside besides him. And, there are still two. After being the only child for over a decade, I suddenly realized that I still had an older sister and a younger brother. No wonder Zhang Chulan exclaimed in surprise. Seeing Zhang Chulan so shocked, Officer Song quickly comforted and said. Don't get excited, listen to me first. That girl appeared this morning, and as for your younger brother, who looks like he's only seven or eight years old, he came to the police station this afternoon. As he spoke, Officer Song told Zhang Chulan about meeting Zhang Bao Bao at Zhang Xilin Cemetery this morning and about Zhang Haoyue coming to the police station to find Zhang Chulan in the afternoon. After listening to it, Zhang Chulan couldn't calm down immediately. He spoke up and said. So, before my dad met my mom, there was a woman in Sichuan. And after he left me, he found a woman somewhere else. Officer Song nodded and said. I just called to understand, and what they both said is basically true. In the registration information of the registered residence system, the little boy's father wrote that his name was really Zhang Yuda, while his mother died after giving birth to him, so he should be your brother. However, when I learned about the girl, it was said that her father's name was not Zhang Yuda, so I couldn't be sure if she was your sister after listening, Zhang Chulan gritted her teeth and said. So my dad left me behind after my grandfather died, left alone, and then found a woman outside. Three children, humph, this jerk is so promiscuous. Although Officer Song wanted to agree with Zhang Chulin's behavior of cursing her father on the spot, he ultimately did not follow suit. Officer Song coughed lightly twice and said. By the way, your younger brother is still waiting for you in the rest room of the police station. Shall I take you there? Upon hearing Officer Song mention her younger brother, Zhang Chulan fell silent for a moment. Su remembered when he was also eight years old when he was left behind by his own father. Zhang Chulan eventually agreed with Officer Song's words. Hey, let's go. Although I haven't even met this younger brother, he's just a child and shouldn't be like me back then. Afterwards, Zhang Chulan turned around and walked out of Officer Song's office, heading towards the lounge where Dong Fang Haoyue was located. He had also stayed in that lounge and knew it was there. At this moment, Dong Fang Haoyue in the lounge also knew about Zhang Chulan's arrival, because as Zhang Chulan approached him one kilometer, the symbol of the treasure chest above Zhang Chulin's head had already appeared in Dong Fang Haoyue's field of vision. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Recognition of Relatives you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Recognition of Relatives When Zhang Chulan pushed open the door of the lounge, the first thing she saw was a delicate little Zheng Tai sitting in front of the computer, constantly clicking with a mouse. Xiao Zheng Tai is dressed in a handsome casual sportswear, which can be said to have perfect looks. Xiao Zheng Tai was naturally Dong Fang Haoyue. He had long known that Zhang Chulan was coming. As Zhang Chulan opened the door, he looked up at her and then pretended to be surprised and ran towards her, brother. You're here. Zhang Chulan was obviously not quite used to being called brother. He extended his right hand and directly pressed Dong Fang Haoyue's head to prevent her from pouncing on him, then said. Little brat, don't shout around yet. I don't know if you're my younger brother. Dong Fang Haoyue was not surprised by Zhang Chulin's reaction, or if Zhang Chulan treated him very well and treated him as the closest person when she saw him, then Dong Fang Haoyue would be surprised. For the situation in front of her, 
Dong Fang Haoyue naturally had already figured out a way to deal with it. After being held down by Zhang Chulan, Dong Fang Haoyue pretended to be thinking and then spoke. Well, by the way, brother, my dad said, if you don't believe me and treat me badly, next time he sees you, he will use whirlwind knee pierce and black tiger to beat you out of his heart. When Dong Fang Haoyue uttered the terms, whirlwind knee breaking, and, black tiger paying heart, Zhang Chulin's body visibly trembled, as if recalling some bad memories. Due to the special circumstances of Zhang Chulin's family, sufficient strength is needed to ensure her safety. Therefore, Zhang Chulan was asked by her family to work hard to cultivate at a very young age. The person responsible for teaching him cultivation is his father, Zhang Yuda. Whenever Zhang Chulan doesn't practice hard, Zhang Yuda will start beating her up. Due to Zhang Chulan's cultivation, the ordinary method of hitting children on Zhang Chulan is only painless. Therefore, every time Zhang Yuda hits Zhang Chulan, he always uses a move. And the two moves of Black Tiger Digging Heart and Whirlwind Knee Breaking were the most commonly used moves by Zhang Yuda against Zhang Chulan at that time. So, when Dong Fang Haoyue said these two move names, it immediately triggered Zhang Chulun's unforgettable childhood experience, making her recall the fear of being controlled by her own father once again. Meanwhile, Dong Fang Haoyue's words completely dispelled all Zhang Chulun's doubts. After all, Dong Fang Haoyue knew even the tactics Zhang Yuda used to beat him when he was a child, and apart from that bastard's father telling him himself, Zhang Chulan couldn't think of any other possibilities. In her heart, she completely believed that Dong Fang Haoyue was her younger brother, and Zhang Chulan did not continue to press Dong Fang Haoyue's head. Instead, she spoke very forcefully. Humph, you let him come. I'm already 19 years old, and I'm not who I used to be. Now who hits who doesn't know? Dong Fang Haoyue didn't have any intention of pouncing on Zhang Chulan anymore. She just showed it to Zhang Chulan just now. If she really pounced and hugged Zhang Chulan's thigh, Dong Fang Haoyue felt nauseous. After being tough, Zhang Chulan said to Dong Fang Haoyue again. Your name is Zhang Haoyue, right? Humph, that bastard left me alone when I was eight years old. I didn't expect it to be like this until now but it's okay. Anyway, you still have my brother. From today on, you can follow me. Dong Fang Haoyue saw the situation and knew that his plan had been almost perfectly achieved. He nodded obediently and said. Well, good brother. At this moment, Zhang Chulan turned around and said to Officer Song following behind him. Uncle Song, could you please help me take care of Haoyue for a while? I'm planning to go and offer incense to my grandfather first. After all, my grandfather's grave has been dug up, so I always have to go and take a look. Then tomorrow, I'm planning to take Haoyue back to school early. Officer Song took a look at the sunset outside and advised, Chu Lan, it's so late now. Your grandfather's grave is on the mountain. It will take quite some time to go over here. Why don't we go tomorrow? Zhang Chulan shook her head and said. Forget about Uncle Song, I'll go early and return to school as soon as possible tomorrow. As Dong Fang Haoyue watched the countdown on Zhang Chulan's head, which had just walked for less than five minutes, there was still a lot of time before an hour to open the treasure chest on Zhang Chulan's body. Naturally, he couldn't let Zhang Chulan leave his sight at this moment. Moreover, Dong Fang Haoyue knew that Zhang Chulan would encounter Feng Bao Bao and also be attacked by zombies when he went to the mountains this time. He also wanted to take this opportunity to see how the means of a one-dot-man world were. Dong Fang Haoyue quickly spoke up. Brother, I also want to go with you. Upon hearing this, Zhang Chulan refused without even thinking about it. Why are you going with me? That place is on the mountain and it's not easy for an adult like me to walk up. So don't go. Dong Fang Haoyue casually made an excuse and said. Brother, why don't you take me there? You don't know about our family yet. I'm in good health, not afraid of fatigue, and I haven't even seen my grandfather before. 
do you want me to have the opportunity to offer him incense? After hearing Dong Fang Hao Yue's words, Zhang Chulan was momentarily stunned. For over a decade, he had been pretending to be an ordinary person, almost forgetting the uniqueness of his family. Upon second thought, Zhang Chulan felt that Dong Fang Hao Yue was right. Anyway, he was not afraid of fatigue, and his grandfather's grave was gone. If he didn't take Dong Fang Hao Yue with him this time, he might not have a chance next time. Besides, it's just a fragrance, so there shouldn't be any danger, right? With this in mind, Zhang Chulan finally agreed to take Dong Fang Hao Yue to burn incense together. Okay, but you have to follow me closely. If I get lost on the mountain, I won't go find you. Officer Song next to him saw the situation but disagreed. Chu Lan, just go on your own. Hao Yue is still a child, how can you take him to that place at night? Let's go tomorrow. At this moment, Zhang Chu Lan had already started walking outside with Dong Fang Hao Yue. He waved his hand to Officer Song and said, Hey, Officer Song, it's okay. I'll keep an eye on him. Let's go. After leaving the police station with Dong Fang Hao Yue, Zhang Chulan found a motorcycle driver and took them for almost half an hour to reach the foot of the mountain where Zhang Xilin's tomb is located. Afterwards, Zhang Chulan began to climb the mountain with Dong Fang Hao Yue, walking towards the top of the mountain. Along the way, neither of them spoke. Dong Fang Hao Yue didn't want to say much, afraid of making too many mistakes, while Zhang Chulan didn't know what to say, after all, he had no experience facing children. It took another half hour to climb the mountain, and in the expectant gaze of Dong Fang Hao Yue, the countdown on Zhang Chulin's head finally came to an end. At the first moment after the countdown, Dong Fang Hao Yue couldn't wait for the system to open the treasure chest on Zhang Chulin's body. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Opening Treasure Chest, Golden Light Curse you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Opening Treasure Chest, Golden Light Curse Ding, the host opens the treasure chest asterisk 1 and gains the skill. Golden Light Curse, Blue, LV7 At the moment of opening the treasure chest, Dong Fang Hao Yue felt a strange memory flood into her mind. That is a child of 3 or 4 years old, practicing all the memories of a skill called the Golden Light Mantra step by step. The child's face was completely indistinct, but all the insights about the Golden Light Curse had already been deeply engraved in Dong Fang Hao Yue's mind. Dong Fang Hao Yue is not unfamiliar with this. The fire control skill he obtained by opening the treasure chest on Jin Ren Fong was instilled in him in this way. However, is it actually LV7 just obtained? It seems that the skill level obtained when opening the treasure chest depends on the current state of the person carrying the treasure chest. Is LV7 Zhang Chulin's own level of the Golden Light Curse? Dong Fang Hao Yue looked at the level of the Golden Light Curse on the attribute panel and began to guess. If my guess is correct, next time when opening the treasure chest, if necessary, you can wait for the person carrying the treasure chest to improve their abilities to the maximum before opening the treasure chest on their body. Dong Fang Hao Yue was pondering these possibilities in her heart, but she didn't think for long. After all, these were just speculations and needed to be confirmed later to be useful. Then, Dong Fang Hao Yue turned her gaze to the system's evaluation of the Golden Light Curse on the attribute panel. Golden Light Mantra, Blue, LV7 a cultivation method that increases all attributes at each level and can generate protective golden light, with both attack and defense capabilities, and dual cultivation of life and health. Hmm directly improving all attributes. Is the effect so simple and crude? Dong Fang Hao Yue looked at the system's explanation of the golden light curse and was somewhat surprised. I didn't expect that the skill golden light curse in the original plot, which could almost be compared to Eight Wonders, would have such a simple effect. However, Dong Fang Hao Yue slightly recalled the performance of the old Celestial Master in the original plot, and it was no longer strange. According to the system's introduction, this Golden Light Curse adds two full attributes per level at levels 
3 full attributes per level at levels 5.10, and 5 full attributes per level at levels 10.15. The upper limit of the blue skill level is 15, so when practicing the Golden Light Curse to the full level, a total of 50 points of all attributes can be increased. According to the system's attribute calculation, these 50 full attributes are equivalent to each individual attribute having 16 times the ultimate strength of an ordinary person. Overall, the gap in strength is simply indescribable. No wonder in the original plot, the Heavenly Master always hits everyone one at a time. This is a proper basic attribute crushing. Also, perhaps only the crushing of basic attributes can achieve the level of the Heavenly Master in the original plot, right? At this moment, Dong Fang Haoyue finally understood some of the power of the old Celestial Master. No wonder the system evaluates the Golden Light Mantra as a dual cultivation method for both life and soul. Improving all attributes means simultaneously enhancing both the body and soul. Isn't it a dual cultivation method for life and soul? At this moment, Dong Fang Haoyue, who had obtained the Golden Light Curse of LV7, looked at her attributes again and found that her attributes had also made great progress. Host Dong Fang Haoyue Jing 25, plus, Qi 35, plus, God 32, plus, Skill. Pure Yang Inflammation, Red, LV2, plus, Demon Slaying Divine Fire, has a restraining effect on monsters, and the flame itself has special effects such as purification, high temperature, and refinement. Fire Control, Blue, LV3, a spell that can better control flames, Golden Light Mantra, Blue, LV7, each level increases all attributes and can also generate a protective golden light, which is a cultivation method that combines attack and defense, and dual cultivation of life. Skill Points 40 Attribute Point 0 Before entering the world of one person, Dong Fang Haoyue had just looked at his system panel. At that time, among his three attributes of essence, energy, and spirit, his essence did not even exceed ten points. And now, just as a treasure chest has been opened, the basic attributes of Dong Fang Haoyue have more than doubled. And he also obtained the Golden Light Curse, a blue skill that can increase all attributes while also being both offensive and defensive. Just by opening the treasure chest once, Dong Fang Haoyue's strength has increased several times more than the strength she had gained after three years of hard training in the Fox Demon world. Sure enough, if you want to improve your strength, honest cultivation is useless. You have to rely on cheating. Dong Fang Haoyue sighed in her heart. After organizing the gains from opening the treasure chest, Dong Fang Haoyue shifted her attention away from the system's attribute panel and looked at Zhang Chulan again. However, when Dong Fang Haoyue saw the symbol of the treasure chest still standing above Zhang Chulin's head, she was taken aback for a moment. According to Dong Fang Haoyue's previous experience, after the treasure chest is opened, the symbol on the chest carrier's head will disappear. Dong Fang Huaizhu, Jin Renfeng, and Dong Fang Qinlan are all like this. However, the treasure chest logo on Zhang Chulin's head surprisingly did not disappear after opening it. Moreover, there is an additional countdown behind the treasure chest logo, and the remaining time is 2 days, 23 hours, and 54 minutes. Just now, about 6 minutes have passed since Dong Fang Haoyue sorted out and absorbed the Golden Light Mantra, which means the countdown should have been 3 days. What does this mean? Can Zhang Chulin's treasure chest still be opened? It just needs to wait for three days. But why is this? Dong Fang Haoyue pondered in confusion in her heart. Well, there's not enough information to make a judgment, but most likely it's because Zhang Chulan is the protagonist of a world plot, so she's quite unique, isn't she? Dong Fang Haoyue, who couldn't figure it out for a long time, could only make the most likely guess and didn't think much anymore. Anyway, the treasure chest on Zhang Chulin's body could possibly be opened again, which is a great thing for Dong Fang Haoyue. Just when Dong Fang Haoyue had begun to guess what the second treasure chest on Zhang Chulan might open, suddenly a sound of shovel shoveling earth came to Dong Fang Haoyue's ears. Upon hearing the sound, 
Dong Fang Haoyue was taken aback and looked around, only to realize that after nearly 40 minutes of journey, he and Zhang Chulan had already approached the location of the cemetery. Is that where Zhang Xilin's tomb is located in front of us? Is that the sound of Feng Bao Bao digging the soil? Dong Fang Haoyue, who had memorized the plot, already knew what was going on with the sound, but Zhang Chulan clearly didn't know what was waiting for him ahead. Zhang Chulan, who had not spoken all the way, carefully listened to her voice and then said. Graveyard, the sound is coming from the other side of the cemetery. Is it that the grave robber has returned? Then Zhang Chulan said to Dong Fang Haoyue. Let's go over and take a look, Haoyue. Then, regardless of whether Dong Fang Haoyue agreed or not, Zhang Chulan quietly stroked towards the cemetery with Dong Fang Haoyue. Dong Fang Haoyue, who had long known that Feng Bao Bao was looking for clues ahead, couldn't speak up to remind her and could only sneak over with Zhang Chulan, hiding behind a tree to peek. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Feng Bao Bao You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Feng Bao Bao Dong Fang Haoyue and Zhang Chulan were hiding behind a big tree, peeking in the direction of the cemetery from behind the trunk. At this time, there was a woman in a white shirt and a dark skirt digging on the grave with a shovel in her hair. Zhang Chulan looked at the woman in the cemetery and murmured softly. Bastard, is that this guy? Digging a slot, or is she a woman? As she spoke, Zhang Chulan took out her phone from her pocket, opened the camera, and prepared to record the scene before her, muttering. Take a full picture of you, call the police later and see if you can still run away. However, just as Zhang Chulan aimed her phone at the girl and enlarged the picture, the girl in the picture suddenly turned back and looked at Zhang Chulan's position. Zhang Chulan was startled and immediately cursed inwardly. Digging a hole, it's done, I've been seen. How you eh, hold on to me. After speaking, Zhang Chulan picked up Dong Fang How you eh next to her and placed her under her armpit. She then spread her arms and ran towards the foot of the mountain. At this moment, Dong Fang Haoyue's face did not show any signs of panic. He knew who the girl was, and it was another protagonist in the world of one person. The immortal young girl, Feng Bao Bao. Feng Bao Bao is a very special person in this world. According to her age, she should be in her seventies or eighties this year. However, Time seemed to have left no trace on her, and she still maintained the appearance of this teenage girl. You should know that in this world, practicing qi can only prevent people from getting sick and prolong their lifespan to a certain extent, but there is no way to achieve immortality. So just thinking about it, you can tell what kind of turmoil Feng Bao Bao's secret, which has kept her from aging for seventy years, would cause in this world if leaked. To be honest, Dong Fang Haoyue herself is also very interested in the secret that keeps Feng Bao Bao from aging and dying. After all, in the world of fox demons, only monsters can have a long lifespan, while the human race, although able to cultivate Taoist and divine powers, cannot achieve immortality. So, Dong Fang Haoyue is still troubled by the issue of lifespan. Although he is only eight years old now, if there is no way to achieve longevity, one day he will also face the end of his lifespan. Pursuing longevity is an instinct of every short-lived species, and Dong Fang Haoyue is no exception. Therefore, facing Feng Bao Bao, who may have the secret of longevity, Dong Fang Haoyue is naturally very interested. However, if interested, Dong Fang Haoyue knew in her heart that it was almost impossible to obtain this secret from Feng Bao Bao. Firstly, the secret of Feng Bao Bao has never been revealed in the original work, and Dong Fang Haoyue has no idea how to obtain it, so it can be said that she has no clue. Secondly, although Feng Bao Bao has not aged for 70 years, the original plot never mentioned how long Feng Bao Bao can live, or how long his lifespan is. Dong Fang Haoyue has a system cheat that can travel through the heavens. If it only helps people not age and extend their lifespan by one or two hundred years, this level of longevity method is not worth Dong Fang Haoyue's great effort in planning. 
So Dong Fang Hao Yue's current idea is to stay at the stage of interest, hoping to see if she can uncover the secret that will keep Feng Bao Bao from aging from the treasure chest. If not, let it go. Although Dong Fang Hao Yue knows a lot about Feng Bao Bao, it is obvious that due to his character in this world, he should not have known Feng Bao Bao. However, in the face of this situation, Dong Fang Hao Yue, an eight-year-old child, is not only not afraid at all but also doesn't say anything, which is not quite right. Therefore, Dong Fang Hao Yue pretended to be puzzled and asked Zhang Chulan. Brother, why do we have to run? Regarding the issue of Dong Fang Hao Yue's slight lack of intelligence, Zhang Chulan said unhappily. Nonsense, didn't you see a crazy woman chasing us from behind? That woman's artistic style is not right, she definitely isn't a good person. But brother, isn't anyone chasing us from behind? Dong Fang Hao Yue looked up and said with an innocent expression. Hmm didn't we catch up? Zhang Chulan, who had already run several hundred meters with Dong Fang Hao Yue, was slightly taken aback upon hearing her words. Looking back, there was indeed no one chasing after her. Zhang Chulan, who was already tired and panting heavily, slowly slowed down her pace and let Dong Fang Hao Yue down, stopping in place to catch her breath. Zhang Chulan took out her phone and looked at the photo of Feng Bao Bao that she had just taken on it. She said with some pride. Humph, Hao Yue, you still need your brother's wit. I have already taken a photo of the dead tomb robber and will hand it over to Uncle Song tomorrow to see how she runs this time. When Zhang Chulan and Dong Fang Hao Yue were beating each other, a figure with a shovel suddenly fell from the sky. A shovel hit Zhang Chulan's head, knocking Zhang Chulan unconscious. And who else could be the person behind this sneak attack, not Feng Bao Bao? Feng Bao Bao stunned Zhang Chulan, then turned to look at Dong Fang Hao Yue beside him. He also weighed the shovel in his hand. It seemed that he wanted to give Dong Fang Hao Yue a try. Dong Fang Hao Yue, who was quite knowledgeable about current affairs, immediately raised her hands and showed a harmless expression on her face. Her voice sweetly said. What's that? Sister, don't hit me. I'll go with you on my own. Upon hearing this, Feng Bao Bao pondered for a moment. Perhaps it was the appearance of Dong Fang Hao Yue's child that played a role, or perhaps it was his words that played a role. In short, Feng Bao Bao did not take any action against Dong Fang Hao Yue. Feng Bao Bao holds a shovel in one hand, grabs Zhang Chulan's back collar in the other, drags Zhang Chulan to the cemetery, and signals Dong Fang Hao Yue to follow. Dong Fang Hao Yue followed without hesitation upon seeing the situation, because he knew that as long as he didn't take action against Feng Bao Bao, he would definitely not encounter any danger. Dong Fang Hao Yue knew that Feng Bao Bao had made a deal with Zhang Chulun's grandfather to ensure her safety because she had lost her original memory. Therefore, Feng Bao Bao would definitely not harm Zhang Chulun. But Feng Bao Bao, to put it nicely, has a childlike heart, and to put it poorly, he is a bit foolish. A clever Feng Bao Bao is not just a name for itself. Therefore, Dong Fang Hao Yue doesn't have to worry about Feng Bao Bao suddenly taking action against him, because Feng Bao Bao never does anything unnecessary. At this moment, Dong Fang Hao Yue followed Feng Bao Bao with peace of mind, ignoring the tragic situation of her brother Zhang Chulan being dragged away. Instead, she stared at Feng Bao Bao's head with extreme anticipation. Because at this moment, there was a treasure chest symbol on Feng Bao Bao's head that only Dong Fang Hao Yue could see, and a countdown with 56 minutes left was constantly beating. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Prayer You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Prayer The treasure box on Zhang Chulun's body has opened a golden light spell. What can be opened on Feng Bao Bao's body? Dong Fang Hao Yue couldn't help but begin to speculate in her heart, looking forward to Feng Bao Bao's treasure chest. Speaking of which, Feng Bao Bao doesn't have any skills either. As long as the treasure chest isn't filled with those away 18 moves, everything is easy to say. 
After recalling the skills that Feng Baobao possessed in her heart, Dong Fang Haoyue suddenly couldn't help but pray in her heart, praying that she should not perform the Away 18 moves. The Away 18 moves, a signature skill of Feng Baobao, was developed under the guidance of his life mentor, Su Si. The complete set consists of 18 moves, named after 18 postures in a certain artwork. It may sound impressive, but in reality, these are just the 18 most basic ways of using qi. It is only with the support of Feng Baobao's massive energy and strong physical fitness that he appears to have such a slight power in the original work. For example, in the original plot, in the second part of the story, Feng Baobao once used a move from the 18 forms of a way, and he threw it into his soul. And this move is actually just to release Feng Baobao's massive energy all at once towards the front. Southwest temporary worker Wang Jinxiu's evaluation of this move is. It's so comfortable, it's like using qi to bathe us. From this, it can be seen that these away 18 moves are a skill full of flaws. It cannot be said to be useless, it can only be said to be useless at all. One of the top 10 experts in the world of aliens, Mr. Lu Jin and Mr. Lu also saw Feng Bao Bao use the Away 18 moves during the Luo Tian festival. Dong Fang Haoyue felt that Mr. Lu's description of this skill was very accurate. If Qi is compared to money, others use magic to buy weapons and attack enemies, while Feng Bao Bao's usage is to prepare to directly use money to smash the enemy to death. Dong Fang Haoyue naturally keeps a distance from such a skill and doesn't want to draw it at all. The reason why Dong Fang Haoyue is so nervous and afraid that she will draw this skill is because Feng Bao Bao has two skills that can be called out by name. One is the Away 18 forms, and the other is a cultivation technique left by Grandpa Zhang Chulan, which is suspected to be the source and flow of qi, and was named Lao Nong Gong by Feng Bao Bao himself. If Dong Fang Haoyue's summary is correct, and the treasure chest opened by the system randomly selects abilities from the carrier as rewards, then the probability of Feng Baobao's treasure chest opening the Away 18 moves is as high as 50%. Dong Fang Haoyue couldn't help but not worry. When Dong Fang Haoyue began to worry about what to open from the treasure chest on Feng Baobao's body, Feng Baobao had already dragged Zhang Chulan to the middle of the cemetery. After putting Zhang Chulan down, Feng Baobao took her shovel and began to dig everywhere again. And Dong Fang Haoyue obediently sat directly on Zhang Chulan's body, watching from the side without disturbing her. As for why she had to sit on Zhang Chulan, it was mainly because squatting on the ground was too tiring and dirty, and Dong Fang Haoyue had no choice but to let her brother serve as a human flesh cushion. This cemetery is not very large with a radius of less than a hundred meters, so as long as Dong Fang Haoyue stays in the middle and Feng Bao Bao does not leave the cemetery area, the countdown on her head will not stop. Even if Feng Bao Bao leaves, there is no problem because this hour is accumulated time. If Dong Fang Haoyue leaves the 100 meter range of the treasure chest holder, the countdown will not reset, it will only pause. When Dong Fang Haoyue approaches the treasure chest 100 meters again, the countdown will continue. Feng Baobao searched and searched in the cemetery for about half an hour, but couldn't find anything. Dong Fang Haoyue was not in a hurry, just sitting on Zhang Chulan and watching. However, just then, suddenly from the nearby forest, a figure walked unsteadily towards the location of Dong Fang Haoyue and Zhang Chulan. Dong Fang Haoyue could tell at a glance that this figure was not a living person, but a walking corpse. Is it a zombie? Manipulating the corpse operation and driving the corpse people from Xiangxi is a bit interesting, but the strength of this zombie looks so weak. Dong Fang Haoyue, who is familiar with the plot, naturally knows that the one who controls this zombie should be Lu Yen Yen, the descendant of the Lu family of the Xiangxi corpse driving family. This little girl is a rebellious girl who ran away from home and then heard about the existence of the villainous organization in this world. Because she thought the concept of holistic sex was cool, this rebellious girl with no social experience actually wanted to join the antagonistic organization of holistic sex, completely unaware of the consequences of doing so. 
Then Lu Yen Yen was fooled by all kinds of people to steal the body of Zhang Chulin's grandfather Zhang Xilin, and these walking corpses were probably left by her. Although with Dong Fang Haoyue's current strength, it is easy to deal with this zombie, obviously it is not his turn to take action here. Feng Bao Bao, who also noticed the arrival of the zombie, quickly rushed over from a distance at an extremely fast speed, almost in a blink of an eye. Feng Bao Bao crossed a distance of over a hundred meters and came to the side of the zombie. At this moment, Zhang Chulan, who was sitting under Dong Fang Haoyue, finally woke up. Although Feng Bao Bao's shovel was not easy, Zhang Chulan had practiced it anyway, so she woke up after half an hour of coma. What's wrong with me? My head hurts so much, and I feel so heavy in my stomach. Just as Zhang Chulan woke up, she covered her forehead and sat up on the ground. When she opened her eyes, she saw Dong Fang Haoyue sitting on her belly. Then she looked up and saw the walking corpse walking towards them. Dong Fang Haoyue, who specifically chose to sit in the soft spot of her belly, said to Zhang Chulan with a happy tone. Brother, are you awake? But Zhang Chulan had no intention of answering Dong Fang Haoyue. At this moment, he was staring at the terrifying decaying corpse in front of him with wide eyes, his mouth slightly open, obviously shocked. At this moment, something even more surprising happened to Zhang Chulan. The tomb raider she had seen earlier suddenly appeared behind the zombie with a kitchen knife, and then mercilessly stabbed her in the back of the zombie's head, with the tip of the knife protruding from its mouth. As Feng Bao Bao slowly withdrew his knife and let go, the walking corpse lay straight beside Zhang Chulan and Dong Fang Haoyue. Zhang Chulan looked at the walking corpse and then at Feng Bao Bao, muttering to herself with some disbelief. This girl just stabbed someone to death, dead person. Dong Fang Haoyue, who had just stood up from Zhang Chulan, turned her head and said to Zhang Chulan. Brother, this is not a dead person. This thing is called a walking corpse. End of this chapter.